Out of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospectives I've done, the most popular so far has of course been GOAT format. I can easily see why, however, because the format is full of diversity in so many different decks that you can play either on a casual or competitive level. You know a format is healthy when you can build a deck like Flip Control and actually have a somewhat competitively viable deck, which is also hilarious to think that a card like Swarm of Locusts is considered good, especially when you compare it to 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh! So after asking you all in a poll and with overwhelmingly good support, from it, I thought it would be fun to talk about the many different playable decks in Go format. However, upon starting the research for this video, I didn't realize how many actual playable decks there were, and as you can see, there's a shit ton. So I'm going to focus on only the best of the best with some interesting decks sprinkled in. Don't worry, it's not going to be all meta decks, but if you don't see a deck you like in this video, be sure to leave a comment, and while you're down there, smash the boo boo stain off that subscribe button and the like and the bell button as well, and let me know your favorite GOAT format deck. I will also have a link to the GOAT format website because honestly, it is a perfect source of info for this format. So the majority of the script and info comes from GOATformat.com because honestly, there isn't many places on the internet other than myself and this website that archives Yu-Gi-Oh! history. I will also be putting the link to the website in the comment section, not the description because YouTube has been buggy as of late and has been striking down videos with links that are outside of YouTube on the video. With all that being said, my name is Avery and this is a many decks of GOAT format retrospective. It's time to do, 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 do. Only in July, exclusively at Blockbuster. Get free collectible Yu-Gi-Oh! stickers from Sandy Lion. No purchase required. Collect all four. Offer good for a limited time while supplies last. Visit your neighborhood Blockbuster store for more details. Visit Yu-Gi-Oh!.com or FreeVibe.com to see a new video featuring the cast of Yu-Gi-Oh! battling a different kind of monster. It's your move. The National Youth Anti-Drug Media Campaign. When talking about the different decks in Go format, we first have to identify the different play styles. First up is Lockdown, which is typically proactive and restricts their opponent's opportunities to attack and make effectual plays in the early and mid games in order to assemble a win condition in the late game. Control typically interacts with their opponents in a complex battle for card advantage and board position during the early game and aims of controlling the mid and late game. Then we have Aggro, which typically interacts with their opponents in a simplistic battle for board position during the early game and aims of winning in the early or mid game. And then lastly is Combo, which typically acts independent of their opponents and ignores both battles for card advantage and board position in order to assemble a win condition in the early game. So the first deck I want to talk about in the control section is Pixie Control. This uses the titular Pixie Knight to recycle the format's most powerful spells, using them to gain card advantage, answer threats, and take control of the game. Most often the deck is built using a Chaos Recruiter shell, complete with Mystic Tomato, Shining Angel, and Silver Bullet targets like Didi Warrior Lady and Nudoria. Angel is used to find Knight, who recurs to Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed, and others, and even in 2023, that sounds really disgusting. Next up is Bait Doll. Bait Doll is iconic for the deck, played as the spell and trap removal choice alongside Dust Tornado. It shuffles itself back into the deck after each use, which is very interesting. This prevents the opponent from choosing and playing around it after Pixie dies, while still allowing the Pixie player to have access to critical back row destruction. Pixie control decks have higher than average monster and trap counts, usually only playing 6 or 7 spells. This ensures that opponents' only choices when resolving Pixie are powerful staples. Chaos Monsters banish spent recruiters and Pixies for easy shifts in board control, while Kaiku prevents the opponent from doing the same. Thunder Dragon acts as fodder for said Chaos Monsters while also thinning the deck, and along with Sinister Serpent, fuels Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. This design comes from GoatFormat.com Discord member The Nano. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. This deck is known as Cat Control. Cat Control is a hybrid aggro control deck with some design links to Goat Format and its playstyle. It's based on the interaction between Rescue Cat and the Wicked Worm Beast. Normally, all monsters that are summoned via the cat are destroyed at the end of the turn. However, Wicked Worm Beast is instead returned to the cat player's hand. This creates a plus one, leaving the cat control player with two extra monsters in hand. Using these free monsters, the cat control deck can poke at the opponent while maintaining card advantage and board state with its support cards. If the opportunity arises, cat can be used for a large push and damage, but such plays are not necessarily required. Metamorphosis is also put to good use, summoning Thousand Eyes Restrict off of GOAT tokens or a previously cat called Mylus Radiant. After removing threats or stalling the game out, Restrict may be tributed for Manticore Darkness, 
a threat difficult for many strategies to deal with. This deck has potential against many strategies. Pandas deal well with opposing goat tokens, while Worm Beast makes it difficult for enemy Thousand Eyes or Strix to suck up monsters and become an actual threat. Alongside Trap Dust Shoot, these cards make the strategy well suited against the format's namesake deck. And since I recently talked about it on the channel, of course, I've got to talk about it here. A Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie Special, one of my favorite cards in the game. Pyramid of Light decks use the Continuous Trap to special summon the massive beast monsters Andrew Sphinx, Sphinx Talea, and sometimes Thinian the Great Sphinx. With their pseudo-piercing effects and massive stats, even a single Sphinx can end the game. The survival of Pyramid of Light is paramount to the deck's success and function, so protection for it is almost always included. Usually this takes the form of Solemn Judgment, but Fake Trap, Cursor Royal, and Magic Jammer are also played. The tune-like drawback of not being able to attack the turn they are special summoned very much hampers the deck's aggressive plan, so it's common to play Skill Drain in order to prevent this. Skill Drain acts as a disruption against enemy effects and is also protected by the same cards used to protect Pyramid of Light. Nimble Mamanga, Sepix Blessing, and even Life Absorbing Machine have all seen play too. This is due to the high life point cost of the Sphinx monsters as well as Solemn and Skill Drain. Reinforcement of the army increases the threat density by searching out Goblin Attack Force, who's a powerful beater under Skill Drain. Rhoda can also find Exiled Force, who also works under Skill Drain since its effect activates in the graveyard. Berserk Gorilla is also a fine Skill Drain beater, whose inclusion is partially because of Beast Soul Swap. Every Sphinx is a beast type monster, so because you can summon the same monster you bounce with it, Swap is perfect in the deck as protection against Sakuratsu Armor, Snatch Steel, or anything else that might target a Sphinx, Gorilla, or Squirrel. With Skill Drain in play, it also allows Sphinx to attack twice in the same battle phase, which can easily end the game. Now let's talk about the more meta-known decks, starting with, of course, what the format is known for, that being Goat Control. As a deck, Goat Control is well-known. It used to be considered the best deck in the format, and for the most part it was. I say used to be, because more recent Goat format tournaments comprise mostly of Chaos Turbo and Chaos Control variants. However, what Goat Control is able to do in this format shouldn't go unnoticed. Even in 2023, there is usually at least one person playing a Goat Control deck. It is wildly consistent. It can counter numerous other decks and has the highest win ratio of any deck in the format, past or present. Go Control is still very much quote unquote the meta, so you should build your deck with Go Control as the deck to beat. What makes Go Control so good is its versatility. Being able to combat threats via a number of different options is a great advantage, and Go Control has a good mix of advantage generators, aggression, control, and power. It uses a wide array of powerful cards to maintain card advantage, tempo, and momentum. To be fair, most Go Control decks run the same 30 to 35 cards. If Xerion Universe is included in the format, Go Control as a deck is pretty much solved. But without Xerion Universe, deck building becomes more tactical and the card pool opens up. Playstyle has a much larger impact on Go Control as a deck than perhaps any other in the format. If you look at modern GOAT format deck lists, some decks are built with GOAT Control as the deck to be. This is by design. It's not called Chaos Control format, even with more of that deck topping than GOAT Control in comparison. When you're studying the GOAT format metagame, GOAT Control is the de facto top deck based on historic results, and you should approach deck building and side deck construction with this in mind, especially if you're new to the format, because yes, Chaos may see more play, however, by approaching deck building from the mindset of beating GOAT Control, it's a fantastic starting point and the branching off from there. The cards you side or main deck for GOAT Control can also potentially be used to beat Chaos variants. Finally, the last deck I want to talk about is the deck that sees arguably the most success in tournaments, that being Chaos Control or Chaos Turbo or insert any Chaos deck name here. The name of the game for Chaos decks is Advantage Generation. Since the decks want to replace Air Knight Parshath with Chaos Sorcerer, it has to also replace those cards that don't synergize well with Sorcerer. Premature Burial and Call of the Haunted are cut for a third Book of Moon and a Dekoichi. Magical Merchant is cut for Dark Mimic Level 1. These changes do a number of positives for the deck. Extra monsters help fill the grave quickly, and the variety of dark flip monsters helps to mitigate Nullman of Crossout. This is an advantage as the deck has to play passively in the early game. Its passive nature is somewhat of a drawback, actually, which is a big reason why you have the variations of Chaos that you do. Perhaps the most important advantage of Chaos Control specifically, however, is simply the fact that it plays so much like Go Control. Access to Thousand Eyes Restrict gives the deck the ability to be passive in the early game and more explosive 
explosive in the late game. It also diminishes Air Knight Parshath's ability to generate advantage if playing against Goat Control, which helps the Chaos player maintain numbers on their opponent. As of this recording, it seems to be a toss-up as to which variant of Chaos is considered the best, whether it's Chaos Turbo, Chaos Recruiter, Chaos Control, you name it. Each has their strengths and their weaknesses, but there's no denying the power of the deck itself. Chaos Sorcerer is an inherent plus one when used correctly. It's a strong out to power cards such as Thousand Eyes Restrict and multiple drops on a single turn can end the game then and there. The variations between Thunder Dragon, Shining Angel, and Skilled White Magician are ultimately little. Both end up filling the same basic role, just in different ways. Mostly, which one you prefer to play ultimately comes down to your playstyle. Aggressive players tend towards Skilled Chaos, while resource-focused players tend toward Thunder Dragon. Angel Chaos is sort of in between the two in that regard. And because Chaos Control plays so much like Go Control, it's not the hardest switch to make. This is one of the advantages of the deck. Overall, most people say that having any Chaos build has a lower overall skill ceiling than Go Control. But Chaos Control has a higher ceiling than the other Chaos variants, such as Turbo or Recruiter, and the ability to mimic so many of Goat Control's strategies while also mitigating some of its most potent plays makes Chaos Control a formidable addition to an already expansive format. And that's the key here. Being able to have so many different decks that you can play, being able to choose your favorite and work on it from there, especially in a format where the card pool doesn't change, should speak volumes to how fun it can be to go back to old retro formats. And that is the story of Goat Format Decks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like rating. Let me know if you want me to go more in-depth with Goat Control. I enjoy doing these retrospectives, and it's a little bit something different that really not anyone else does on YouTube. The research can take a while, uh, depending on the topic, but I hope that you still enjoy these regardless. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.